Hello from Bahrain. Uh, you join us on Friday evening here, so it's the end of practice. Um, much nicer conditions actually than we've, we've seen today. It's been pretty hot. Um, do you want to just walk over this way slightly? You can see the boys working hard in the garage. Um, we had an FP1 this morning, track temperatures peaked at about 51 degrees, I think, and air temp was 30, so it was pretty steamy for the guys um, in the garage. Um, FP2, as you can see now, is uh, in the dark, and uh, temperatures are a, a bit, bit more comfortable, down to about 25 degrees, 30 degrees on track, and the guys now working, you can see if Adam pans around, um, getting into their usual Friday programme. So as always, this is the longest day for everybody, um, getting into their sort of pre-race setup, um, changing all the bits that we need for turning the cars into race spec, um, including the gearbox and things like that. Um, it's pretty much the longest day they have. We want to just sort of walk on through. We're going to uh, start just uh, making our way to the back of the garage. Um, curfew tonight is 4 a.m. So this is pretty much the latest day that they, uh, that they are working. Hopefully we won't be here until exactly that time, but um, it's usually pretty close. So Friday's Friday's often the day that they're not that fussed about and we'll be happy to get out of the way. Um, but at least it has cooled down a bit and there's a little bit of breeze, so not too bad for them here in Bahrain. Um, now, we've been trying to talk to you about some of the sort of unsung heroes and some of the areas of the business that maybe aren't as obvious, but are obviously quite critical to what we do. And this week, we're going to tell you a little bit about um, the IT infrastructure that we have here. So it's a very data-driven sport. Um, keep coming this way. and. Uh, you can see here there's a, the bank of where our engineers sit, um, which is the bank that we don't usually show on TV. The guys in the middle of the garage and the guys on the pit wall you see quite regularly. Um, and obviously the data that comes off the car is kind of a bit of a, a given. Everyone knows that they'll be able to, to read everything that's coming off the car. Um, but how that happens and how we rely on that, we have a, a team of IT technicians. And we're going to come over to one such IT technician, uh, James Kent, who's one of our trackside team. Uh, James, can we interrupt you, please? Um, got a little microphone for you here, if you want to take that. Um, so firstly, we're obviously talking about what you guys do, and it's, it's okay. often not, not really noticed, but it's yep. very critical. Um, so can you just give us a little bit of a, a snippet of what you do, you know, when you arrive at track yep. and, and how that all works? Okay, so typically we arrive at the track on a Tuesday of uh, race week, and uh, we're responsible for ensuring that Everything you see around the garage is set up in a manner that allows our engineers, our mechanics to work as efficiently and as effectively as possible. Um, so we start off by um, arranging our, our sea freight and our air freight and offloading that into the garage and getting it roughly let out as quickly as possible. Um, like the hub of IT is essentially our rack that we carry everywhere with us. Yep, which we can um, see here. So it's, <laughs> 700 kilos of loveliness yeah. and um, es essentially runs everything within the garage that you see. So that could be the desks that you see behind you and it could be uh, access points where all the guys to play their music. It could be... <laughs> yeah, which we've um, tried to get them to tone down, apologies for that. <laughs> or it could be our link back to the factory that we're heavily reliant on um, to ensure that the guys get data back and can uh, review and um, use that to in inject performance to the car, essentially. Okay. So who's responsible for system uptime? Um, how does that work? So the long and short of it between IT is the two guys that travel and uh, the guys that support us back in the factory. Um, okay. So we're responsible for ensuring that all systems that support our engineers are maintained and uh, are always available. We do that for a number of different methods. So um, it could be something as silly as running scripts to check disk space on certain hosts to make sure they're not going to run out during a session, mm -hmm. or that would be actively monitoring data as it's being sent back to the factory. And have we had any IT issues that we've had to solve? That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> no one likes admitting that yeah. they have issues. But um, yes, we um, certainly have. Um, so. Over the course of the years that I've been traveling, um, we look at ways in which we can improve services. So those are always built off the back of our operational faults. So that could be something like, at uh, present, uh, we built uh, some new desks 
that allow us to set up in about four hours less time um, than in previous years. But as a result of that, um, there are little niggles with them that we need to continue to sort out. So laptops might be overheating them and we're looking to try and improve the airflow to allow them to perform better. So you see, we always talk about airflow to the car and actually getting the car to work, but actually we need to keep the laptops cool and, and yeah, all these things that people don't think about, especially in a garage like this where we've yeah. got really hot temperatures. So our, our cooling meetings in an hour's time, so we might bring it up as a uh, <laughs> yeah. additional point of interest. Yeah. So in terms of um, last year, you mentioned the new stations. Um, what's, what's changed from your perspective then from 2018 to 2019? Um, so as far as we're concerned, the way in which our team is deployed trackside has changed. So um, ahead of an increased count of races, we're trying to um, facilitate keeping things fresh and allowing the guys to come out and experience what we're doing trackside. So we'll have two guys um, on a rotational basis um, that will be attending each event and then we'll cycle in additional people from the factory to support. Um, and yeah. I, uh, okay. Um, and what do you say is the best thing about your job? I think the best thing is the diversity of it, like my bread and butter is IT, but when you're exposed to things like the desk, we've got a new pit wall coming uh, hopefully for Spain, um, and I, a number of projects that we, we get involved with, it means you can get your hands dirty with mm. a, a raft of different things, and it just keeps everything fresh all the yeah. time. And due to the nature of the business, um, it means that we get maybe early access to new software or hardware and it gives us the opportunity to, uh, to get stuck in with it. And if there was one thing that you could, you'd say would maybe you would like or you could change or that would make your life easier, um, what would you, what would you want? Call one, I guess. So <laughs> um, everyone always complains about the Wi-Fi. So <laughs> yeah. if, if we could make that better, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, and then you'd stop having all the questions from everyone that exactly. just every time the Wi-Fi drops out, and most of the time it's not even anything to do with you guys. Exactly. Um, and a final thing, um, obviously we, we are talking you know, sort of seriously about the data, and there's a lot of data that's coming backwards and forwards off the car, and it's kind of a critical part of the business. Yep. Um, in terms of that data protection, um, how do we manage that? So we manage that at different layers. So um, the first thing is endpoints. So we encrypt all of our endpoints and ensure that they are uh, prevented from data leak uh, prevention. Um, and the next item would probably be the way in which we transfer data from uh, the track to our factory. So we run that across a secure line. Um, yeah. means it can't be intercepted by anyone that attempts to do so. Yeah. Um, uh, with that, we also back up our laptops to the cloud. Um, we use an Acronis backup to do that. Um, it allows us to be able to restore files for corrupt laptops and build them quickly. Yeah, which is pretty vital, I guess, in everything that we do. Oh, yes, so, definitely. Yes. <laughs> um, well, thank you very much. We'll let you get back because I know it's Friday and you guys are busy and you've got a cooling meeting to get to to make sure those laptops are okay. Lovely, so lovely. So we'll leave you to it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Um, and thank you for joining us here in Bahrain.